Colonel Lee Ellis joins me now, like John McCain. He was a prisoner of war in Vietnam. Welcome, sir. Good morning, Carol. <sighs> what do you make of this? Well, there are three things that hit me on this. First of all, I'd like to say, you know, Senator McCain is a personal friend. He was captured 11 days before me. We were in the same camp twice. We lived together in the last uh, six weeks. We saw each other every day. Uh, I supported him in 2008. I was a surrogate speaker for him. He uh, wrote the foreword to my 2012 book, Leading with Honor. We don't agree on everything, but we have a strong bond. And I know he's in a great battle now, and our thoughts and prayers are with him. Sir, and sir is he a family. songbird? Yeah. Does he deserve this criticism? Well, I'm getting to that. I wanted to establish my credibility to speak to Senator McCain, you know. I can tell you, I was there five and a half years, the same as him, and I know many other people. No one has ever called him a songbird who was a POW. You know, that's a very derogatory term. And uh, the general who's a, a very decorated soldier who served well and admirably in many areas, both in combat, several tours in Vietnam, and then as a diplomat, supporting diplomats, he's a very good strategic thinker. But he's just flat wrong, and he certainly was... Um, not only wrong, but uh, used poor judgment in calling John McCain a songbird because it implies that he was collaborating with the enemy, which never happened. John McCain was very courageous in the POW camp and served and, and, and admirably. Sir, uh, sir I, just, I just want to remind people of Senator McCain's injuries. You know, his plane was shot down over Vietnam. He broke both legs. Or he broke, he broke his leg. He broke both arms. His Vietnamese captors broke his shoulder. They fractured his ribs. Um, they beat him every three hours for a time. I, I just, it just astounds me that you make a political statement as a senator, right? And, 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 and now people, certain people, think they have the right to disparage Senator McCain's character and also his service. That's something new in America, isn't it? It really is. Uh, everyone has gotten so uh, visceral and emotional and uh, reaches out for words that we really don't want to use in a civil society. But I think we need to be cautious. Uh, using that kind of wording against Senator McCain is unfounded. And, and if you watch that clip closely, I think he used the word, it's a fact. Well, it was not a fact. And I know from experience, I know from what all the POW saw, I know Colonel Bud Day, Medal of Honor, one of the most courageous guys among us, and he was John McCain's roommate, and he loved John McCain. And he certainly would not have been loving a songbird, I can tell you that. So that's just totally wrong. And so I guess the real issue here also is this whole thing of how torture has been so blown up and so blown out of proportion in our culture today that people have totally lost perspective on what we're talking about here. The reality is that if uh, a terrorist was holding, uh, let's say, the president of Marymount University with a neck, a, a big blade up against his neck and was going to kill him and go on to the next land, then we had a sniper there. We would tell that sniper to take him out immediately. And likewise, if we had a terrorist and we had pretty accurate information that a terrorist mm -hmm. had a nuclear bomb in a suitcase in Los Angeles County, I think any good commander would say torture him to see if we can find out because we know torture does bring some information. It did with almost all the POWs who were there. They could make you say something. They could make you submit. So uh, I think the General McInerney, whom I admire in many ways, he just, uh, he just uh, like many of us get sometimes, we get out of our league in talking about something we really don't know anything about. Because and, uh, sometimes yeah. um, when you torture suspects, they say anything to stop being tortured, right? You don't know exactly. if what they're saying is accurate. Yeah, and and was, just finally, was, should... Yeah, should, I was should... tortured for I was tortured to fill out a three-page biography, and eventually I gave him something like everybody else did. But there wasn't much truth. My dad's first and last name was about the only thing that was true on that three-page biography. We made it up. But there are cases where they could make you do something. This case, they were torturing us for lies, for the most part, on propaganda. Here. What we would be torturing someone was to find out the truth of what is uh, impending a danger to our culture and our society. But I think most all Americans believe that we are not about torture. That's who, not who we are. Right. Most soldiers feel that way. We don't want to torture people. But there are certain situations where you would kill somebody, and there are certain situations where you would torture somebody if it meant saving the lives of others. Enough said. Colonel Lee Ellis, thank you so much for, for joining me. I do appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Thank you. The